to talk 20 minutes about the topic which could take four hours. So, um, who is here? My name is Aaron Kaplan, I work, work at CRVT. Uh, Roman Graf from Austrian Institute yes. of Technology. And um, so, big disclaimer, uh, so especially for me, I dabbled in neural networks um, way back when at the TU Vienna, um, but it was a very specialized field back then, and in, uh, only like in 2005, 6, 7, the field exploded. So I sort of missed that part a bit, and a lot of uh, knowledge is there. Um, so that's why I rely on Roman, um, uh, especially for the uh, machine learning and um, uh, AI part. But um, yeah, if you want to know more about this, and we can only cover really a little bit in this short talk, um, here is the, the, uh, the real book. The, oops, sorry, exactly, that's what you warned me about. Where's the thing for, here. Here's the, 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 the book to read. Um, so the goal of this talk is really to get you interested in uh, this topic. And by doing that, uh, you know, to get you interested, basically we want to share uh, what we were able to achieve with uh, classifying Android APKs uh, and our success story um, or the current status of it at least. Um, and uh, it's a really interesting field. So, quick start, definition, the classical definition of a machine, machine learning is uh, you have a computer program that's learning uh, from experience E with respect to some uh, class of tasks T, uh, and the, of course you need a performance measure P, um, and uh, if it improves with experience E. So basically, training, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah? Um, brief history, this whole thing, especially artificial neural networks started uh, way back when uh, with the perceptron and uh, it was um, pushed back uh, in the 60s uh, and it was called dumb connectionism uh, so the the whole symbolic uh, uh, AI came to be hi Paul <laughs> and um, it was forgotten a bit and uh, like back propagation was invented twice uh, but then something happened really in the 2000s uh, that basically with the advent, uh, with the advantages of GPU power computing and of course, you know, the, the new tensor processing units and stuff like that, there were really great uh, uh, successes and progress. So for example, this is the classical picture. Um, that's, uh, you know, success with the probability that this is a mite uh, image classification, uh, that this is a container ship. So you can see it's pretty good in most cases. Um, and here there is an interesting uh, decision that it's actually classified as cherry, even though this one is bigger. So it's not never 100%. That's one big takeaway. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, a little bit how our brain works. Uh, and we had a great talk about neuroscience uh, recently in this conference. So, um, brief recap, neuroscience, uh, it was already presented. Uh, we have uh, here the, 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 the cell, the nucleus of the, the brain cell, uh, the axon, basically output, inputs here, um, and uh, then uh, of course the reality is way more complex. Um, and the most important thing here is um, for our model at least, is this postsynaptic uh, gap or cleft, uh, where, uh, as we heard in the neuroscience talk, um, uh, chemicals are being uh, passed on and some are um, um, more, uh, you know, the weights, we can model these as weights and some are uh, inhibitive and some are uh, en enhancing the, the signal. So, how do we model that? Really just a recap, or for those who already know it, uh, or uh, for those who want to know more about it, just to give you the brief intro, you have uh, inputs uh, in an artificial neural network, uh, you have weights, the synaptic uh, cleft, you have a summation function, and you have an activation function. This could be a linear or whatever, a sigmoid function usually, uh, or relo or something. And we model this as the activation function phi of x, uh, usually that's a sigmoid. Uh, we make the sum over the weights and the xi's and put it into the activation function. If that is above a certain threshold, the neuron fires and it passes on the information. Uh, if you implement it, uh, this is basically how it would look like in a very simple example, the architecture. Uh, and here you could have two outputs. Uh, let's say this is a cat and a dog, and you have uh, three pixels in that case to 
distinguish. It's probably not very useful, but uh, it's good for explaining the architecture. Uh, and if you if you do the uh, the inputs here, usually floating point numbers between zero and one, uh, multiply by the weights, uh, su sum it up, and activation function, and calculate that path forward. That's what's called forward propagation. Um, and uh, as said, inputs are vectors, outputs are again vectors. Uh, let's say a classification vector. Backprop uh, does the op opposite. It calculates uh, the, the weights. The weights are usually initialized in a random, hopefully good random um, uh, uh, initial value. And um, then uh, the, uh, the, the, the network learns by adjusting the weights uh, over the time with known input, known output. So it's supervised learning. We know the input, we know the output, and we adjust the weights. That's back, back propagation. I hope I could summarize it in one sentence now. <laughs> if you want to know more about that, really read this book. This is really fantastic. And there's lots of YouTube videos. There are lots of tutorials, online courses. Get your feet wet in this field. It's really interesting. It's really fascinating. I'm going to wait a little bit here. Yeah, pictures, OK. Um, there's another, there are multiple approaches, of course, with machine learning, and there is one called support vector machines, uh, and we used that initially for a project I did with some students, um, and I tasked them to, to uh, re-implement a paper called Dreamin. Uh, that's the paper. Um, and basically, it should classify Android APKs based on some feature vectors. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And the output should be basically be, is this malware, yes or no? Yeah? Or is it benignware, yeah? goodware? Um, and with support vector machines, the approach is different from what I just explained before. Uh, the approach is uh, that we have a high dimensional vector. Uh, where we, first, we extract some features here. Uh, we embed them in a vector space. Uh, basically a large bit field, yeah, it has this feature, yes, no, it sends premium SS SMSs, yes or no, and um, that becomes a high dimensional vector space, uh, and we try to put the dots here in that vector space um, of the different samples. Let's say we have an example of Android APK which uses very few permissions uh, when you install it, and it's really a regular app that does just um, something trivial. Let's say a note note taking app. Yeah? Uh, and then there's a second uh, Android app which takes all kinds of different permissions and is a game and it actually doesn't need all those permissions and it wants to send premium SMS in addition. That would be a nice rich feature vector with lots of bits set and uh, it's probably up here somewhere in the malicious hyperplane area uh, and we can create a separation hyperplane between the benign and the malicious APKs, the features at least. Yeah? Again, training allows us to create that hyperplane. The nice thing about this approach is, there are some disadvantages. The nice thing about this approach is, uh, if something is in that malicious hyperplane area, uh, you can explain why. You can basically go down the coordinates uh, and say, this actually used premium SMS numbers uh, or some other, you know, maybe uh, it used a syscall that it didn't have the permissions for. Maybe that hints at a, a local privilege escalation. Uh, and so you can explain to the user. So this is what the, the Dribin paper actually did. It was successful and the task for the students was to do the same but improve it. Um, let's briefly talk about the feature extraction because that's one of the really important parts. Um, APKs are basically zip files uh, with some extra files in there, manifest and MF and the meta inf directory. Uh, there you have the lib, you have the dex code. Uh, I'm sure there are some Android experts here in this area, uh, so I'm not going to explain all the details because you know it better. Um, but basically you can take these and you can decompile uh, the dex code, uh, get the syscalls which are uh, being used. That's one feature set. Um, and you take the permissions, that's another feature set. So we basically extract those fe features. We think about what would be a good indicator uh, of maliciousness. Thank you. Um, and uh, we try to create that vector space. So here is the proposed feature set 
for example, requests to hardware components, GPS camera, all these things. Maybe a game needs that, maybe not. Maybe um, a note-taking app does not need the camera. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Then requested permissions, for example, send SMSs to premium SMS numbers, et cetera, et cetera. You can read. Um, and so the feature set of the original Dreaming paper uh, was... Uh, like this, we had way more features. We tried to um, play around with more features and to detect more. This, the lesson is this is sometimes useful, sometimes not. It's, it's really a balance here. Uh, so that's an interesting thing. Yeah? The interesting result is with enough, given enough RAM <laughs> for an SVM algorithm, um, you get pretty interesting uh, true positive rates and pretty low false positive rates. Um, so we were in the range of 60 till 97% true positive rate, um, depending on some parameters and the amount of data we put in. Um, ah, yes, I forgot one important thing. You take the data, you split it, uh, let's say 80-20 or 90-10. Uh, 80 is the training uh, uh, set, uh, 20 is the test set. Yeah. Yes, and you, you train it with the training set, uh, you create the hyperplane and... Um, then basically you test it with a test set. How good was your training? You tweak parameters of the uh, of the machine learning algorithm. You do it again and again and again and again. So interesting. At the same time, a team from Singapore did the same. It uh, uh, tried to improve that, uh, achieve the same. Uh, we synced a bit. Um, the problem that we had, and that's where you come in, is. Uh, with this high dimensional vector space, if you're not careful about the feature sets, and you want to basically have all the features, right? That would be cool, but you run out of RAM. Like we, we maxed out at 200 gigs, and that's sort of what the, what the, uh, the server gave us, and, um, we would have taken more, but it was too expensive. Um, so the other approach is, as we explained, neural, artificial neural networks, and you had some really good success with that. Yeah? Thanks. I will briefly present our results for our neural network model. Uh, here uh, you see uh, some examples of uh, our features. Uh, there are, it's extracted from this uh, Dreben paper, and uh, there are different uh, Marva families, and actually features are just uh, strings or sentences. And uh, on this overview, uh, we demonstrate that we will have different uh, situation awareness systems and in each system uh, we will train our own model because uh, uh, we noticed that uh, APKs are very different and it depends on time uh, and so on. Uh, so we need to train different uh, data sets. And uh, so we extract data uh, for each data set features and uh, we store them and uh, train our model and uh, additionally we also want to apply some uh, expert system rules because uh, sometimes you can uh, immediately say if it's malware or not from different sources as our uh, neural network it would uh, increase speed and uh, facilitate calculations and the result of our calculation, uh, we provide in a, a plant APK feed that should be publicly accessible and then distribute between interested people. Uh, here, uh, in for, our, for training of our uh, neural network, we applied word embedding method. It's an established method uh, for this case. And uh, it's simply that we take our text and uh, we should convert it to numbers. Uh, problem is that uh, neural networks cannot uh, work with uh, text, so we need numbers. Then uh, in, uh, we just uh, uh, take our sentence, like uh, for instance, Haklu is very interesting and very helpful, and uh, put it in array and uh, assign to each uh, word uh, a number. So for instance, the word very comes two times and has index three. Then um, this index we convert in one hot vector. For instance, for word interesting, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 for this sentence. And uh, uh, word embeddings can be applied for frequency. Uh, this means counting of words or for prediction. In our case, we use it for frequency count. Um, then we proceed and uh, 
we define number of our embedded vectors. Uh, uh, so how big is it? Uh, in this case, it's six. The size is six. And um, for each uh, file, we create a list of such embedded vectors. Uh, so, so we have a data set. Uh, with, with this data set, we can start our uh, training. Also, we split our uh, data in test, validation, and training sets, as it usually will, done, will be done. Here is uh, briefly our workflow. So we extract features, uh, look if uh, already uh, this uh, feature exists in our model or not. If not, uh, then we train. Or otherwise, we just ask our model. Additionally, we pr proceed with uh, engine, uh, rule engine. Uh, this is a sample of our rules. I will not go deeper now because we don't have enough time. But uh, we, uh, first rule is uh, our neural network input. And other rules can be completely different depending on time uh, or uh, who has produced this APK and so on. And uh, then uh, it will be automatically uh, take uh, conclusion. Uh, we will take conclusion if it's uh, Marvel or the Benin, Benin sample. Uh, in this picture, you see uh, that we apply different uh, parameters that we can change, uh, like learning rate, uh, uh, vector lens, uh, embedded vector lens, uh, then validation accuracy, training accuracy. And uh, on the right side of this table, uh, you see our res example results, like true positive, false negative, uh, how uh, good uh, was uh, working our training mo our trained model and uh, here is a sm small picture about the training that our error should reduce during the iterations and uh, our accuracy increase and you can see below that we used different layers uh, uh, we flattened our input uh, then we should uh, uh, we used the dense uh, layer with sigma activation function. And on, the, on this last picture for our model, you see a operating characteristic, relative operating characteristic plot. It demonstrates how well our model uh, learned. Uh, the uh, perfect classification uh, point is up uh, on the upper left side. It demonstrates the uh, uh, best uh, results. Uh, the theoretical, best theoretical results. And uh, a, right, uh, a red line uh, divides uh, good results from bad results. As you can see, our blue points are all uh, in the near of perfect classification point. And uh, in comments, you see different parameters we applied for particular training. And I will pass it again to Aaron. Thank you. So, yes. Um, so, the idea, how much time do we still have, actually? That's good. Uh, about a minute. Oh, oh well, that's not good. Okay. <laughs> so the, the, the takeaway point of this is, um, for I think for the IT security community, uh, usually when we... I, w I was tempted to make a slide, like blockchain, IoT, machine learning, yeah? and everyone would go like, oh, yeah, uh, buzzword, bullshit, bingo. But I think if you take a look at that, at, at especially the IT security community, if you take a look at uh, some parts of machine learning, you can do quite something. I'm, I'm pretty convinced of that. Of course, it's not never easy. It's never like, uh, you know, out of the box. It takes uh, tweaking of parameters. You have to do ROC curves and see what is really working and what not. But I think uh, it's a skill that we should all uh, dig into a, a bit. Um, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, the libraries are really simple, uh, like Keras and uh, TensorFlow and so on. They're they are accessible for us. Uh, they're not like, you know, we have to uh, learn a new assembly language or something like that. It's, um, well, that's, for some, that's easier. But, <laughs> um, anyway, it's, it's, there's a lot there already. There are lots of, um, public papers on that on archive.org. Um, and, uh, we can, we can sort of have a, a situation where, for, let's say, a reverse engineer would see something. I was dreaming about that and talking with Thais about that. Um, if, if a reverse engineer can see something, and this, is, this code looks ugly, and it looks like it could have potentially so many uh, vulnerabilities in there, maybe we can 
um, do some kind of uh, scoring at least. So, so it, the system, the machine, machine learning system will be just like a friend, an expert, helping you and saying, hey, this looks like, in masses of data, this one looks like it's interesting. Take a look at this one because it looks like crappy PHP code or so. Yeah? Um, so I think we can do that. Similar to when, when a doctor looks at an x-ray, um, he's trained, his brain is trained for detecting the cancer. The same success or higher success rates were achievable with uh, uh, deep learning. Um, so, of course, there is one big difference. Like the cancer cell doesn't try to maliciously with uh, intelligence try to circumvent any machine learning techniques that we invent to detect it. The, our adversar uh, adversaries actually do. So th that will not change, of course. We cannot outsmart that. But we can scale up a bit, and I think that's pretty interesting. So here is the, the GitHub repo, oops, again. Here's the GitHub repo uh, for the machine learning part um, and our email addresses, and I think, I hope we're finished in time. Yeah? Time enough for a few questions, if anyone has one. All right, if not, let's give them a hand. There is one, there is well, one. We have one. Mm, oh. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I would like to know if you, uh, how was the proportion that you had between clean files and malware files, or yes. if you were just boosting with your malware so, files? So, that's a very good question. So, um, there we had to make some base assumptions. So, we got actually the already classified files uh, from uh, AV uh, vendor. Then we added uh, the F-Droid APK files, where you have to submit the source code. So, the assumption was that F-Droid files are clean, which I think, well, at least if you're, an, if you're a malware developer and you want to open source your software, you might be okay with submitting it to F-Droid, but usually you don't want that. Um, and of course, the, the, it doesn't catch some you know, specific uh, malwares which uh, uh, will download malware code dynamically. That's not detected, it's static analysis. Um, so there, there, you're right, there are lots of assumptions in there. Um, and, uh, it was, one assumption is like what the AV vendor would, uh, classify as good and as bad, huh? So we just took that and, uh, it was roughly 50 50, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One there. Hello. Uh, that's quite a similar question. Just imagine you remove, um, things APK is not detected as malware from your set and then try some files in your um, classifier. Let's say you remove um, Facebook from the training set. How would this kind of file be classified? So that's quite similar. It's about what do you consider as malware? Yeah. Uh, we just had to make some base assumptions. What uh, the, uh, we, the input files were um, the APK file, and basically, it was in a folder. Goodware, malware. Yeah, very simple. Uh, actually, there was a third one, which is adware, and we pretty much ignored that. Yeah, um, and um, we just overtook that assumption in order to do the training. Um, uh, of course, if you you know if you have a different concept of malware than me, of course, I might have mistrained it for you. Yeah, we also provide some explanation why we decided that it's yeah. malware because we yes. have our features uh, ex uh, yeah. added to this result and you can uh, decide by yourself if it's malware for you or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you were an attacker, how would you avoid detection by these methods? Uh, one example, as I said, sorry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so trying to answer that, yes, don't uh, like be below the radar as long as possible as an attacker. Second thing is, uh, we didn't in this case we didn't do dynamic analysis. analysis so uh, just download something um, that's dynamically, and then execute it. Voila. Yeah, that's the limit of the system. Yeah. All right, that's the limit of the time. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.